Why hello there, I'm Anxious Cynic, and welcome back to what is now a rare Minimator tutorial. So if you recall, one of the last animations I made had a bit of a stop motion-y feel to it, and I had a, at least one or two requests, I think, to do a tutorial on it, and, you know, it's only been about a year, but uh, we'll go ahead and try to cover what it is I did here. So in this scene, I already have a Steve spawn and we're just gonna use the default walk cycle as an example of, you know, what you would do to create a stop motion-y kind of movement. So as per usual, I'm just gonna put a second keyframe there, highlight the first one, put in the automatic walk cycle and then drop down all the body parts so I can see all the keyframes and uh, you know, this is what you end up with, just the usual walk cycle. Now, of course, this applies to anything, not just this walk cycle, but I figured this was the easiest way to kind of showcase the effect. So uh, anyway, highlight all the keyframes and uh, change them to whatever kind of transition you want. Now, obviously you might be first thinking instant transition like you see here. Uh, for my project in particular though, I wanted to have a little bit more of kind of a nuance to movement so I didn't use just strictly instant keyframes. So what I did is I actually went down to this, uh, what is it, like an ease in out uh, exponential, I think is the transition that I use. Again, it's been a while since I made that animation, but if you watch this, you'll see that it's got kind of a stop motion feel, but it's just got a little bit more movement to it. Now, of course, this is kind of playing a bit too smoothly. So one of the things you'll want to do is customize how far apart your keyframes are. So I don't remember exactly the distance that I use. It also depends on your frame rate and whatnot, but uh, you can use any transition you want. And depending on how far away the keyframes are from each other, you'll get, you know, kind of a different look to it. It'll have a different type of motion. So with this particular transition, the closer they are, then the more blocky, the more kind of stop motiony, the, uh, the movement will appear. So in order to change that, I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, some of these keyframes for the walk cycle. I only need the two since it's a repeated movement. So I just highlight those last two sections of keyframes and then I move them accordingly to where I want them to be. For this example, I decided to put the uh, keyframes where the legs are in a position and the head uh, about 10 keyframes apart. Again, you can use any distance you want. This is just what I decided to go with for the look. And uh, basically once you get them set to where you want to, you just copy those keyframes and paste them and create the cycle again, but at the uh, intervals that you've chosen. And this is the look we now have. So obviously, you know, Steve's not gonna be just walking in place. We wanna make him move. So I'm gonna go ahead and move him forward. And uh, by default, it's going to be on Lanier, so you'll see that it's just kind of a blocky movement with him kind of smoothly walking forward. Which is a viable look if you wanted to go for that, you could totally do that. It's kind of an interesting aesthetic. But if you want him to move more uh, stop motion-y as a whole, the entire animation is going to have that overall look then what you can do is pick your intervals. For me, again, I chose where the legs are keyframed, and I'm just gonna place a keyframe for the main character body at each point with it set to linear still. And with those keyframes set, of course, it's not gonna show any difference because it's still linear, but I'm gonna highlight those keyframes and change it to the same uh, keyframe transition that I use for the other parts of the body. And this is the result we end up with. So again, it's not completely stop motion -y. It's got that little hint of motion in between each pose, uh, which is kind of the look that I wanted for that particular animation. But of course, you can change those transitions, uh, even mix them up. Like for this, I have the motion for the body set to instant, and then the rest of the body's motion, the body parts are still with the kind of motion A keyframe. And you end up with this weird kind of slidey stop motion -y look. So you can choose to stick with one particular type of transition or you can mix them up to create kind of more intricate looks. Whatever you want to go with, whatever you want to do, uh, it just depends on the aesthetic that you're going for. So yeah, there's a brief kind of simple overview of the technique that I use for that animation. And I uh, hope you learned something, hope it was helpful. 
If it was, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you know, if you want more tutorials, don't just ask for tutorials. Tell me what you want to know. Tell me what you want to learn. Something. Something more than just asking for tutorials. Alright, I'm out. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.